God don't need preaching. He already has his word. But God is interested in how you worship today. He's looking for a response from you. And then after the preaching of the word of God, he's interested in how you're going to respond to that. Amen. I don't know about you, but I come to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords today.
walk on streets of gold. Yeah. Amen. Anybody looking forward to it? Yeah. Come on. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Uh, yes, just want to go ahead and make their way. We do have uh, a few announcements that we would like to make. Uh, first off, the, uh, the benefit for Sister Megan and Brother Michael is going to be this Saturday at the Zanesville campus. Uh, it, it will be from 1 to 4, but we are in, still in need of volunteers uh, to help in the kitchen, to help uh, with some games, to help with uh, just some organizational things. So if you are interested in, in, in helping, uh, volunteering, volunteering your time uh, for Sister Megan and Brother Michael, uh, you can either see myself or, or Sister Elena, and we'll be able to uh, coordinate that with you. But we want to make sure we are able to support that. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, our kids' Christmas program will be the 15th during service, uh, so we want to, that'll be a good time, <laughs> amen. Um, also, the Zanesville campus is having a Christmas, I guess you want to call it a, a, a cantata, is that what you call it? Um, a Christmas cantata next Sunday night, uh, if you are interested in going to that, it'll be a great night of singing and fellowship, so if you're interested, that's next Sunday night. Um, also, our church's Christmas party will be December 12th at 6.30. It will be a potluck style. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the foyer for that, and there will also be a $5 gift exchange. Amen. It's just a busy time of year, and it's good to get together. Amen. Speaking of getting together, there's one more uh, get-together for the Anchor Church Seniors. Uh, this will be at Sister Amy Kabbalah's house. It will be on Saturday, December 21st at noon. Um, there'll be lots of fun. Uh, bring a Christmas candy for a grab and steal exchange. Uh, if you can see Sister Amy, uh, if you want more information on that, but we will get more information to you as the time gets closer. And everybody say announcements are done. Announcements Amen. Are done. Why don't we go ahead and uh, bow our heads and pray for this offering. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we just have something to look forward to in heaven one day. We thank you, Lord, for this presence, God. Thank you, Lord, for what we feel in this place today. God, I pray, Lord, you bless this offering, bless the giver, and bless the remaining service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
what the Lord gave me. Yeah, that's good. And uh, we're in that season where we have to keep our focus the focus. And you know, I was listening to some of the football commentators and stuff from yesterday's game. And uh, if you lose focus, you get beat. Yeah. You don't pay attention to detail. Right. And uh, you know, Ohio State lives to beat Michigan. Amen. And that's true. Amen. And, I mean, it's it's the we're already prepared for next beating them next year. And that's the way Ohio State looks at it. But I read an article or a comment from um, Michigan doesn't take it as as serious as the Buckeyes do. Right. And so they, you know, the Buckeyes have an edge because they keep it a focus. And that's why. Ohio State's beat, beat Michigan 17 out of the last 19 times they played because they have a focus and it means something to beat their, the team up north. north. And as children of God, we have to make sure it stays a focus. That we just make sure that we trample on the devil. Right? right? That he has no upper hand. We're always prepared. We're, you know, we had a victory today, but we're also starting to prepare for tomorrow. For tomorrow. Right. Every day is a battle. Every day we prepare to make sure that our enemy never gets ahead of us or beats us. Amen. I'm glad that God put something in me to want to win. Because if you don't want to win, you're not going to go to heaven. Is that the truth, Brother Lehman? Some people, that's why some people aren't here today, because they don't take it serious. That's right. Amen. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that much to them. My soul means more to me than anything else in this world. Yes, sir, making sure, yes. making sure that my calling and my election is sure yeah. is what yeah. it's really all about. Yes, there are some people that are sick and can't be here. Some people just think that uh, the Steelers are playing the Browns, I think. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I, 
given up on professional sports and all that stuff a long time ago. Right. But not a lot of them guys will pray for you when you, That's right. when you have a need. They may bring you joy for a moment, but then next week they, they bring you just as much <laughs> anguish. And, yeah. But my God never fails. Never. Somebody, I was listening to some preaching on the wind and uh, up here today, and somebody said that they found a piece of either the manger or the stable that Jesus was in. And uh, he said, I don't know how they found, uh, how they know it is from there, but they, but you know, he said probably they're going to market it and make a lot of money, so people will come and see that piece of. It. But really, it doesn't matter the piece of the manger. What matters is I got a piece of Jesus. Amen. Jesus has got me. Amen. Amen. And so it's, all, it's what was laying in the manger that matters. Yeah. Not the piece of stuff that held him in the manger. Right. Right. Amen. But Amen. you know, this world markets everything. We market Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We really we market everything because there's a dollar to be involved in everything we do. Yeah. And uh, so we're having Brother Neiman come to do our faith promise, which leads me to that. And uh you know, it takes money to spread the gospel around the world. And I told him in the room a few years ago, how many remember when we gave the missions offering? Uh, Brother Bounced it, uh, said we're going to receive an offering next Sunday. And I think we received a little over $800. Anybody remember that? And he said, we're not going to keep a dime of it here. We're going to send it off to missions. And then right after that, somebody donated enough, the same amount of money to pay for the sign out front to get a change. You cannot outgive God. God always blesses those who make a sacrifice. And that's what faith promise is. And we're going to have Brother Lehman come and uh, stir our, our minds by way of uh, example and uh, testimonies of people. We have, there's people in here that have a testimony. Brenda and I have a testimony from last year. And I told uh, them in there, and I told you on last night, those that were here, uh, my Christmas bonus was doubled last year because I doubled my faith promise pledge. And so God gave me all my yearly uh, faith promise in one lump sum. And that's the way God works. And not only just monetarily, but also spiritually and physically and all of that stuff. God knows when you give up your treasure, He blesses you in every portion of your life. And then Brother Lehman, just come and speak to us. And I'm going to have an open heart and an open spirit and sit in prayer because the Lord is going to deal with you about a number to give to uh, Faith Promise and Global Missions. And last year we gave $1,000 a month. And I would like to see that incre increase this year. Uh, God's, God's able to help us, isn't he? Amen. 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 How many been blessed because you give? Amen. 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 Brother Lehman. Amen. God is always good to us. Amen. Now, I am a Buckeye. I was born in the big city of McCuneville, Ohio. Anybody ever hear of McCuneville? All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I used to say it's a poke and plum town. Poke your head around the corner and you're plum out of town. <laughs> but, uh, God is good. God is always good. And uh, I've just been blessed over and over and over and over and over and, and continue to be blessed. God gave me a good wife, and, and uh, she works on me. You know, husbands, you know how it is. I mean, you can make a statement, but you better know what you're talking about, right? Because they will correct you. And I'm, I'm correctable. <laughs> if that's such a word. <laughs> but uh, I am uh, glad to be here, and it's good to be in the house of God on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Amen. Amen. Now, I have prayed for good weather, because we, we were in the Crooksville, uh, and then at, at 10 o'clock, here at 2 o'clock, and New Straitsville at uh, 6 o'clock. So uh, it's, a, it's a busy day, but I am glad to be in Buckeye territory. Amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God. And I'm glad to have my wife and my sister. Uh, sister Ross is my sister, in case some of you didn't know that. So uh, we are the last two of the Lehmans left, that is, of, of the original family. Well, I shouldn't say original, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't the originals. <laughs> but uh, we... Uh, I enjoy coming to Ohio, and then when I come, 
she likes to go with us to the services, and that's fun. You know, we uh, we enjoy each other and uh, just enjoy. And I want to congratulate the pastor, Brother Nutter, for your uh, assignment here. And uh, I think uh, the Lord is in it. Amen. 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 Will, will it work out? Listen, God's in it. It'll work out. Yes, it and it'll grow. Yes, it will. And this won't be big enough. Amen. 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 Well, amen. I've got a few amens, amen. but this is not big enough. Amen. God will continue to bless uh, month after month and week after week and just uh, a joy to be in the house of God. Well, uh, this afternoon, in fact, God changed my mind uh, early this morning. I, I was going to preach on something else and and I just kept feeling this and feeling this and feeling this. And so here I am. And I'd like for you to turn with me to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. And I'm going to begin reading with verse 41. Mark chapter 12, beginning with verse 41. <clears throat> now, let me, let me just stop a minute before I read my scripture. Uh, you've received one of these cards. Now, this is... You know, some people are afraid to give. They say, well, if I give, then I won't have it. Listen, the Bible says, give and it shall be given. Yes. As you give, God gives back to you. Yes. God gives back to me. Yes. God gives back to all of us. Yes. But when we are thinking about a faith promise, it's a matter of talking to the Lord. Now, Lord, what do you want to channel through me? It's not a matter of what, you know, you, you just want to pick a number out of the air. No, it doesn't work that way. It's a matter of you talking to the Lord and you say, well, now how God talks to me. He impresses you with what, and, and that amount just kind of keeps going over and over and over in your mind. That's the way God works. Now, many times we will say, well, God spoke to me. Well, yes. In fact, I, 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 I remember I remember one incident in my life where God impressed me so much and so forcibly that it almost seemed like it was a voice, yeah. uh, you know, where, where you felt it so strong and you couldn't get away from it. Well, that's good because that way you're in connection with the advisor right. yeah. and he is our financial Amen. advisor. Amen. So Mark chapter 12, beginning with verse 41, and it reads like this. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow, hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And I'm speaking this afternoon on, on this subject. I'm asking a question. Does God care about my giving? You may be seated. Now, this particular saying is where Jesus was in the temple watching the giving that was being received. He observed a number of wealthy uh, persons as they went by giving out of plenty. But then the scripture brings in a certain poor widow can, uh, came by and cast in two mites which are equal to one farthing. Now, a mite was the smallest of copper coins, normally equal to one-eighth of a penny. That's not much. A farthing was a Roman coin valued at one-fourth of a penny. And then it says, who had that? A widow lady, you know, hardly any income, but yet she brought and gave in what she had. That's all she had. And Jesus was watching. Now, I like to visualize the picture where uh, the disciples were off to the side watching the giving that was being received. And as they came by, 
when the widow lady came by with her two mites or one farthing, Jesus pointed it out. He said, that lady has given more than all the others put together. Yes. Yeah, man. Now that's quite a statement. Yeah. Yeah. Because there had been wealthy come by and they gave, no, no doubt, you know, they wanted to make sure everybody saw what they gave. Right. Right. And, uh, and they could see it uh, mounting up. But I can see this widow lady as she came by and I, 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 to me, she had her, her two mites in, in, in her fist because hers was so small compared to the others uh -huh. that she was embarrassed that she didn't have any more to give. Yes. But Jesus turned to the disciples and said, she has given more than all the others. Yes. Now, can you see the disciples looking at each other and say, did he see what I saw? Yeah. You know, yeah. they saw the big amounts. Amen. Jesus was zeroing in on the small amount. So, really, what this, say, what this message is saying is this. The message declared by our Lord on this occasion is that a gift is to be evaluated not by its size, but by a comparison of the gift with the total amount possessed by the giver. She gave everything, yes. and Jesus saw it. Amen. Now, a large donation out of abundance may be less significant than a small donation out of poverty. This widow gave the smallest possible gift. But again, it was all that she had. She gave, you know, others gave of their surplus. But she gave everything. And that's, that's, that's quite a statement, church. You see, man sees what is given. God sees what is kept. And when God impresses us, in fact, let me relate an incident. Uh, and, and my son, our, our son who, uh, who uh, is living in Florida, he's moving back to Missouri, or back home. But he related this testimony to me about a friend. And that friend used to be live, and used to live in Lancaster when I pastored there. The, his mother, the family lived just one block from the church. Now, the husband was never in the church, but mother brought the family to church. And this boy was growing up when we were there. Now, here we are years later, and he had moved to Florida, had a good job, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a faith promise service just like today. Just now, this, let me just explain something before I get to his full testimony. This card is, uh, is perforated in the middle, so that you can give the white amount and keep the dark amount to yourself. Now, he was in a service in, uh, in, in Florida, in a faith promise like today. And uh, he was sitting there and uh, he was asking, Lord, now I'm asking your direction. What should I commit in this offering, in, in this faith promise? And he felt so impressed to give a $500 a month commitment. Now, he was a businessman doing good. And so that $500 a month was a lot of money. However, it wasn't his all. You know, it wasn't all that he had. But he he, uh, he tried to talk the Lord out of it. He said, now, now Lord, you know, in his mind, uh, you know, not, not, vo vo not vocally, but he, in, in his mind, he was trying to say, now God, you know, I, I, I could do a hundred, but Lord, five hundred? And so he filled out his card for one hundred dollars a month. Now, the, the commitment came in and the dollar amounts was read. No names, just dollar amounts. And then the pastor stepped up and he thanked the church for the offering that or the faith promise that had been received. But then he said, I have felt that we were $400 short in this commitment. And here, you know, this man, originally out of Lancaster, now in Florida, was sitting there and said, God, that's me. That's me. Well, what do you do when, when God speaks so forcibly to you that you know you're the one that they're talking about? And so he thought, well, 
you know, I'll, uh, uh, I'll, all right, I'll, I'll start, I'll start giving five hundred dollars a month. Right after that, he got a raise of twelve hundred a month. Yes. Now that's not, that's not just an accident, folks. Right. God Almighty sees my giving, and He sees your giving, yes. and He knows if we are giving what He is directing us to give, yes. or is it something we think. You know, I like the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which says this. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. How can you get by without obeying God? He sees what I give. He sees what you, we, we just gave in the offering. He knows that. And so when we begin to realize what God is doing, how he sees my giving and your giving, he sees all of our giving and reside uh, be, beside the, uh, you know, uh, the age. Doesn't matter. I mean, I've been in services where kids uh, like five years old made a 500, or I'm sorry, not 500, a $5 commitment. And he, I was in that church. It was in Kentucky. I was in that church uh, the next year, and that boy came up to me, and he said, Brother Lehman, and he related this story. He said, last year I gave, I made a commitment of $5 a month, and right after that, Grandpa started giving me $5 a month. So he said, this year I'm going to make it for 10 <laughs> his, his level, I mean a five-year-old, his level of faith yeah. rose. Yeah. Right. So God sees our giving. Amen. Amen. Now, I was in Columbia, Mississippi a number of years ago, but uh, to me, I have traveled in services like this for so many years, and I've got, honestly, I've got so many testimonies that I couldn't even give them to you now, honestly. But, but anyway, Columbia, Mississippi, I was in a, a weekend service there, Saturday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night. But uh, in the uh, Sunday night service, I preached, and the congregation was challenged to give. Well, the commitments came in, and uh, they were read, and uh, then at the close of the service, there was a widow lady came down the aisle of that church, came right up to the edge of the platform. She said, Brother Lehman, I want to tell you what happened to me tonight in this service. She said, first of all, I am a widow without any income. And she said, I live with my children. That is how I survived. But she said, I felt so impressed tonight that I was to make a $10 a month commitment. So she said, I made my, my commitment and uh, I turned it in, and after uh, you know, after uh, we had uh, you know, after the people left around the altar, she said I went back to my seat, sat down, opened up my purse, and there was a one hundred dollar bill <laughs> in my purse. She was shocked wow. because she had obeyed, and God blessed her immediately. Yes. Now it doesn't always happen that way, but her testimony, I still want to continue. Her testimony was so impressive and so powerful. The next morning, uh, one of the men was driving me from uh, Columbia, Mississippi to Jackson to catch my flight back to St. Louis. And so uh, as we were driving along back to the airport, I related to uh, the driver about this widow lady. And, uh, and he was quite interested as I was talking. And I related about her uh, making no, no income, but, uh, uh, you know, she had felt impressed to give $10 and turned it in. And then there was a $100 bill in her purse after church. Then he related to me that it was his wife that had given that, that widow lady $100. Now, that, that man, now I was there several years ago. That man today is a millionaire. You say, how did that happen? Well, he got a job with the, the Mississippi uh, government on, on road construction, and he was very good. And his income, I mean, just kept going up and up. And God has blessed that man in so many ways. The church re, uh, re, uh, repaid the par parking lot. He paid for it, over $100,000. You see, he gave, just like the widow lady, you know, he, uh, th this widow lady, gave the smallest, probably of the whole congregation. But God saw it. Yes. He saw it. And he still sees it today. Amen. We can't get by with just ignoring, uh, even in this service, concerning the white card. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah. We, when we obey God, even in, I know, I know where I'm preaching. I know where I'm preaching, but I know this. God Almighty will bless this city just as much as he will bless a bigger city. You give God, you give God a chance. You cannot give God. There is no way. God is so powerful and, and blesses us in, in, in so many ways. Now, you know, even uh, I was in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, I've, I've been in that city many times, but in this particular service, church, I mean, I've been there at least 15 times. And so um, uh, the pastor related what happened to him uh, with a uh, little Sunday school girl. Now that church had several buses and they bus them in for Sunday school. And uh, he related about this one little girl that uh, came to Sunday school every week. Now her parents weren't in church. She came by herself on one of the buses. She got up that morning knowing that they, they received a missionary offering in the Sunday school class. Well, she was looking for some money, and she could not find any money at all. But she found three little flowers. And she thought, oh, the missionary will really like these flowers. And so she brought the three little flowers, went to her Sunday school class, and uh, told the teacher why she had brought flowers instead of money. Teacher, I could not find any money at home. Uh, but these are, th this is my offering. And, and the teacher was so impressed that she went to the pastor. Now this was between Sunday school and morning worship on a Sunday morning. She went to the pastor with those three flowers and told him about this little Sunday school girl. Well, the pastor was so moved, he said, let me have those. He said, I'd like to go to the uh, pulpit this morning and see if I can raise some money out of those three flowers. He walked to the pulpit that Sunday morning and related the story about this little girl and what she gave, and he held those three flowers up. He said, is there anyone here that will give me $500 for these flowers? Now that's a pretty brave pastor that would stand up and ask for that kind of an offering on Sunday morning. There was a new man that had come in that church that Sunday morning, seated on the back row. He stood up, he said, I will give you $1,000 for those flowers. He was so moved. That night, that man was baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the baptism of God. God sees our giving. God sees our giving. And even a new man was moved, was moved as he, as he thought, a little girl, no money, but brought three little flowers. You know, the, the little girl, now she wasn't thinking about the end result of those three little flowers. You know, you, you, you bring three little flowers to church and, and they're, they're cut off and, you know, no, uh, no, no sustenance at all. They're, they're going to die. But God saw those three flowers. Yeah, yes. And God honored that man, that new man that came in that Sunday morning, heard the story, and then God Almighty honored his giving. Amen. There, there, there's something about giving that is exciting. Yes. Amen. It is exciting to give. Yes. And the thing is, Jesus said give. Uh, Luke 6, 38. I like that scripture because they, there's such a message in that scripture. But Jesus said give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom. Yes. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now what is that scripture saying? That scripture is saying when you give. I will move on men to give back to you. Think about it. Yeah. Given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, run it over. Shall men give into your bosom. Yeah. Now you think about your giving in the past. Think how you have given. And maybe uh, in, in a time where, where the church was raising money for a, you know, a, a real needed project. And you felt like God directing you. And you feel, I can't give that much. But listen, when you give. God moves on men to give. But I mean, I have got so many testimonies, so many testimonies. In fact, uh, I was in uh, Kirksville this morning and, and left my Bible case in the pastor's office. And uh, he called me after we left and said, you, you, you left your, your Bible case here. And, and I, I mentioned to uh, my wife and, and sister, I said, well, uh, there's a lot of testimonies in that, in that case. Because I carry a lot of them with me. Yeah. But I, I know it works. Yeah. And I've got the proof of it as I'm preaching and just relate. In fact, earlier this year, we were in Moorhead, Minnesota. Now, that's the, the western part of Minnesota. 
and it was their first time to ever hear about a faith promise service. Well, I preached that, uh, that day, and then uh, uh, there were commitments made, and uh, I, I received this, uh, this testimony from the pastor. It said, uh, a lady in our church committed $50 a month in her first faith promise commitment. Two weeks later, she was handed an envelope containing $1,000 as repayment of an old debt. Now, you, you see see how God works? Yeah. That, that lady, she, she made a $50 commitment and God gave her a thousand back that she should have had earlier. But whoever the, uh, whoever the person was hanging on to that thousand dollars, God moved on them after they committed. Yeah. Give and it shall be given. That's what Jesus said. Yeah. That's not what John Samuel Lehman said. That's what God Almighty's word says. And uh, when, when we obey, when we obey the Lord as he, uh, as he impresses us, we are in tune for a blessing. Amen. Now, this church has had, this is not the first time this church has heard about faith promise. This church has been involved in faith promise for many years. Now, maybe not every year it was uh, renewed, but uh, you have been renewing. In fact, uh, I was here last year, and, and I'm here today, and Lord willing, I'll be back, Lord willing, one of these days. But uh, you, you see, uh, I, I enjoy what I'm doing because I know I'm in the will of God. Amen. Now, I pastored in Lancaster. I pastored well. In fact, it's quite a story. Uh, I, I graduated from ADI, St. Paul, Minnesota, and came to Lancaster at, at the request of the pastor. I was there for seven, seven years, and then God directed us to start a church in Wausau, West Fountain, 750 miles away. Then I was by, five years later, I was invited back to Lancaster. And I was there five years, and then uh, I came with foreign missions and been with foreign missions ever since. But the thing is, uh, that church was not involved in, in, they were involved in missions giving, but not on a consistent basis. And as a result, when I uh, took to church, and of course, I, I was influenced by my brother. My brother pastored in uh, Detroit. Uh, Michigan and and uh, of course my, my dad died when I was 16 and and uh, my my older brother uh, that was pastoring in Michigan I, I was influenced by him uh, he had a powerful you know, almost like a dad you know with his influence and so uh, with his giving they were his church was in the top 10 giving churches in the nation and uh, so I I was I was wanting to catch up with him and so uh, we started promoting missions and my last year as pastor in Lancaster, uh, our church was 11th in the nation. I missed it by one point. But, but again, uh, he influenced me. And I thank God for influencers. Amen. In fact, Brother Bounds, Brother Bounds has influenced your pastor here. And other, other ministers has influenced him. And so I, I trust that today we will just think about what God wants to channel through us. Now, it's not going to send you on, on Poor House Road uh, if, if you give and give more than what you think you could give. And usually, many times, that's what God impresses us to do, more than we think we can do. But when we obey, when we obey, it gets very exciting, very exciting. And, uh, you know, here at home, now may, maybe even in the offering that was taken earlier, here at home, uh, we, uh, we, we give out of habit. If you follow what I mean, when they say, all right, church, it's time for the offering, we think, bing, well, I've always given one dollar, and so that's what we give. But have we ever considered asking, Lord, what do you want me to give? And it'll be different. It will be different. But there's something about, uh, about giving that, that gets the Lord's attention. Yeah, you, you see, uh, God has so many things that he wants to do through us and with us in our finances. You say, you, you could say, well, Brother Levin, I mean, we, we hardly make it day by day now. Well, maybe that's the reason because you haven't given like he requests you to give. Yeah. I, I'm not exaggerating in, in what I'm saying today. Uh, the, the, I, I, I've got so many illustrations and, and testimonies in fact, I, I've just got a few here for this message, but i got a whole bunch more. I've got two books uh, on faith uh, that, that uh, are out 
that that has has really has really uh, helped people with with their giving. Just showing them by example what God will do for you and with you if you let Him. But you've got to be involved. You've got to obey what God Almighty says. In fact, let me give you a couple of illustrations about our missionaries. Now, our missionaries that travel on deputy, they are givers. Our missionaries, uh, I've said this in, in very few churches, but our missionaries are among the top giving in the nation. Now, Alexandria, Louisiana has been our number one giving church for many, many years. But last year, our missionaries gave more than they did. I mean, our missionaries are sold on what they're doing. They preach and they give. But uh, one of our missionaries uh, was, uh, in fact, my wife and I were in the Philippines. I'd been over there speaking in their uh, Bible school. And we were at the hotel getting ready to go to the airport to catch a flight back. And so one of the missionaries, he said, Brother Lehman Sinatra, I want to tell you something. He said, I want to give you my testimony. He said, I was traveling on deputation. Now, that's when, that's when the uh, missionary goes from church to church. And your pastor uh, gave me a little clue this morning that I'm going to try to help this church out uh, by, uh, by having missionaries come by. Because when you have missionaries come by and, and hear their testimonies, they are not over there to make money. They are over there to obey the will of God. Right. But one of our missionaries that, that sat down and talked with me, he said, Brother Lehman, I was traveling the East Coast when I was in the States uh, uh, you know, on deputation. He said, uh, he said, I was to go to the state of Maryland. And he said, uh, I, I called ahead to get my schedule. And he said it was right during their district conference, which meant that I couldn't have any services through the week because they were in the you know, conference. So he said, uh, he said, I, I arrived at that conference on a, on a Monday night, the first night of the conference. And he said, uh, I, I, had, I had two dollars in my pocket. That's all I had. And, and I was there, you know, hoping that I could get some offerings that, you know, give us a little money that we could keep on traveling. But he said, uh, the first night in that conference, he said, I was seated in the audience and he said uh, they stood up and made an appeal for a special offering that they needed. He said, God spoke to me and said, I want you to put your last two dollars in the offering. But he argued with God, but God, this is all I have. This is it. But he said, when that offering plate got closer and closer, he said, I couldn't keep that money. He said, I put it in the offering and wondered, well, what am I going to do the rest of the week? How am I going to live? So he said, uh, later on in the same service, he said the one leading, the district superintendent was leading the service, looked back and saw me, the missionary. He said, church, we got a missionary with us in this conference. He said, I think we need to take up an offering for that missionary. Wow. Of course, that was, you know, that was mighty good news to that missionary. <laughs> so they took up the offering. And at the close of the service, they came to him with the offering that had been received. And the, uh, the man with the offering said, you got a nice offering tonight. The amount in that offering was $1,002. Did you connect the giving? He had $2 that he gave. It's the last he had. And God just, let, you know, God has ways of letting us know. He knows what's going on. And when, when the, you know, the, the missionary was told what the offering was, he knew right away, hey, God, you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. You know my life, you know my giving, and you saw why I gave. Yeah. And then look what he gave back. You can't outgive God. Yeah. There is no way can you outgive God. In fact, I want to give one other testimony uh, about one of our missionaries. He, uh, he came home again uh, for death, travel and deputation. He thought he would get him a motor home to travel on. That way, you know, he's not in a different bed every night, which is what a lot of them are. You know, traveling from church to church, you never know where you're going to stay. And so uh, uh, this particular missionary uh, thought he could uh, get a motor home and realized they're just too expensive. And he thought, well, I'm a little mechanical, so I'll buy a bus and I'll try to convert the bus so that I'll have something to travel in. So uh, he bought the bus and then realized, hey, this is just too big of a project for me. I can't. So he was driving by himself. In that bus, his wife was in uh, Texas. And so uh, uh, 
uh, he was driving in Louisiana and had a little problem with the bus. Pulled it in and, and they told him, said, well, we're, we're, we'll fix it for you. So he got it fixed, he thought he got it fixed, and drove about 50 miles more and there was more problems and they told him, sir, you've got to replace your motor in this bus. And he thought, man, I, I don't have any money. Well, how can I do that? He called his wife, who was in Beaumont, Texas. Now, somehow, uh, she must have communicated that news to the pastor because they took up a special offering for that missionary for the motor that he needed for that bus. And uh, so uh, they, they sent the money to him. He had the uh, motor fixed. And then he drove back through Beaumont, Texas, Texas to pick up his wife. Well, he pulled into the church, and one of the men that was there at the church came up to the missionary, and, and you know, they greeted each other. And, and then the, uh, the man from the church told him, he said, Sir, I want to tell you what happened to my wife and I when they took up that offering for your, the, the motor for the bus. He said, We had been saving $380 to blacktop our driveway from the street up to the, uh, up to the uh, garage. He said that we felt so impressed that we must give that money in the offering for, for the motor for your bus. So he said, we gave that in the offering, which meant, well, you're gonna to have to wait a while longer uh, to get your uh, driveway. But he said, a few days later, we came home from work and the blacktop crew was a couple doors down the street from their house. And he thought, well, you know, that, that's something. And so uh, <clears throat> uh, just a day or so later, they came home from work and their driveway had been, I'm sorry, I got it mixed up. The first time he came home from work and his driveway was blacktopped. Then he wondered how in the world 